Hello, welcome back. Hope you all are doing well. And today we are going to solve lab number three from API testing module from the Procedure. And in today's lab, we are going to exploit a mass assignment vulnerability. So what this mass assignment vulnerability is all about, suppose a user is not intended to perform some manipulation task or uh, changing any data. Okay, but if a user can override that server side variable for which he is not intended to do by the application, that means this is going to be the mass assignment vulnerability. And uh, this vulnerability most of the time occurs because of uh, too much data you fetch by an API query or API request, which you do not need or a user do not need to uh, access. Okay, so make sure whenever you are developing a method, so that API request is not going to fetch too much data or provide too much data to the user so that a uh, user can access what he is not intended to access. Second is make sure the uh, access control mechanisms, authorization mechanisms are in place. You separate the information into the chunks so that you have wide space. Maybe some information is only intended for the finance department or tech support department or employees, other employees. So data classification is very important before you offer that data to any user or any entity. Fine. There are different level of classification of data. And if you do not classify the data, you cannot put the control on it. Even if you put a million dollar security controls over that, but if you do not classify the data, they are not worth for you. Okay. So that is just uh, uh, other conceptual things. Fine. So let's see. Uh, to solve the lab, find and exploit a mass assignment vulnerability to buy a, a lightweight leather jacket. Okay, you can log in to this account and to solve this lab, we require this knowledge like what mass assignment is and why mass assignment may result in hidden parameters. Okay, uh, how to identify hidden parameters, how to exploit mass assignment vulnerabilities. These are the points you should know. And as I mentioned, as you can see this second point, okay why mass assignment may result in hidden parameters because some parameters are not intended or uh, should not be exposed to the uh, normal user okay or any user who is not allowed to access that data or the parameter so if it is exposed that means uh, he can use those parameters to uh, manipulate things and he can identify the hidden parameters right so that's it. I already accessed the lab here. You can see this is our lab. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to start the bug proxy on my browser so that all the traffic go through the bug proxy. Okay, now I split the window so you can see everything. The first thing, as I mentioned before, from the initial point that anything starts with reconnaissance. In reconnaissance, what we are going to find out our purpose is to find out any API request or any API endpoint in this application if it's using. So first of all, I'm going to access the home and there is no API endpoint. Um, I'm going to, let's see, uh, access the product, this one product details. Okay, product ID is equal to one. This is the request. Now, if we scroll down, we can add this to our card. Okay. So now you can see one product is in our card and up to now there is no API endpoint we found. Go to the card, check each and every functionality. Okay, so once we go into the card, you can see we find out one um, API endpoint, which is API slash checkout. Okay, that means this request is interesting for us. So if you see that closely here, Now you can see API checkout. This is a get request, but the response is very interesting because you can see, I do not need to see this parameter. Okay. Uh, like choose and discount. What percentage of discount we have? Okay. 
chosen product is this this is okay up to here this is okay this is what a customer need to know but in a normal query once we are not applying for let's say uh, just wait a moment normally because here you can see there is no place to apply for the coupon so maybe if we apply for the coupon or if the company give us some discount at that instant uh, maybe once we apply for the discount maybe at that instant this is worth knowing although this should be from the back end but here this is a serious problem because now this unintended variables or parameter a customer can see and maybe he can manipulate so for this purpose i'm going to send this request to the intruder and also to the repeat repeater first i'm going to the intruder clear everything my purpose is to manipulate this percentage of the discount so if i make the percentage of discount 100% that means i can purchase this product in zero dollars fine so my purpose is to manipulate this part okay so what i'm going to do going to the intruder again and let's see what methods are allowed so i'm going to add this go to the payload and here i'm going to add the methods so add get post update put patch um, delete okay options so these are the most most used methods we have fine and now I'm going to simply start the attack now once we start the attack there is only one request having 200 status code rest of all the request you can see 405 and if we see the response you can see method is not allowed if we see post uh, here we do not find method is not allowed uh, update method is not allowed put method is not allowed okay uh, patch method is not allowed okay options method is not allowed so post is interesting one because it's not saying that method is not allowed that means post method is allowed but the problem is in the error it's saying unexpected at line number one column number 11 fine so i'm going to close it discard that and go back to the repeater okay okay so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to change this get request to the post request fine and now we need some data so i'm going to take this data copy and paste it here um, also i want to see content type here or we are just going to send this request if there is any problem with the content type because content type should be application slash json but i want to see if it give us that error or not okay so close this one with another curly braces and just send this request so now as you can see there is another error and it's saying key order key chosen product okay undefined is not an array okay so let's see i'm going to say content content type and it is going to be application uh, slash json let's send this again Hmm. bad request uh, let's go back and we see something else let's take this complete value okay and go forward and instead of that i'm going to put everything okay just send this request to see if it's working or not and as you can see now 201 that means request is accepted but error is coming because we do not logged in 
okay fantastic so what i'm gonna do i'm going to my account and let's say wiener and the password is peter login don't save now go to the card and we need to place the order okay it's saying not enough uh, credit score well um, back to the proxy this is the api checkout request uh, i'm going to send it to the repeater or you can just take the session cookie uh, fine this is our request i'm going to send it now i'm going to take this whole value and paste it here although instead of get i'm going to say it's a post request and send it so 201 created but now it's time this time it's saying insufficient fund of course because we have zero dollar credit so we need to say okay the discount percentage is 100 percent on this product that means this time once it apply the 100 percent um, discount we are going to purchase this jacket in zero dollar so send this request and as you can see request is created order is confirmed is equal to true and once we come back here you can see the lab is sold if we refresh now you can see uh, there is no product in our card okay there is no product in our card and we already purchased that product fine so that's it for this lab and i'm going to see you in the next lab bye